Hello everyone and welcome to my quick tutorial on Triple K package for Mathematica. If you know what Triple K integrals are and you are just interested in the package, just skip to this time. And if you want to learn what Triple K integrals can do for you, stick around. Okay, so. What triple K integrals do is they express a large class of uh, Feynman integrals and conformal three-point functions, and they provide exact analytic results uh, that were previously not known. And this is implemented by um, a reduction algorithm that was presented in this paper. And it's very convenient for um, cosmology. Why is it convenient for cosmology? Well, this is because in holographic cosmology, we would like to calculate holographic correlation, correlation functions, something like this, and using um, some sort of DSCFT or ADSCFT, we relate these correlators to uh, correlation functions in the dual field theory, and if we are talking about real universe, then these guys are correlation functions of stress tensor in three-dimensional um, quantum field theory. Now, how to relate these things? That was um, worked out for the first time probably in this paper by Juan Maldacena, and if we go to page 31, um, we find these kind of formulas. So this is a general answer that will appear no matter which version of the correspondence you use. The um, cosmological correlators will be related to uh, correlation functions in the dual field theory. Now, if we use some specific realization, uh, such as this one, which is um, worked out in a series of papers, basically starting from this one. So the power spectrum and um, two-point functions of um, transverse traceless gravitons um, are expressed in terms of this A and B coefficients here. So these guys, um, these guys are given by a two-point function of the stress tensor. In general, the two-point function of stress tensor um, is transverse, so you can decompose it into two pieces. The first piece is traceless, so this tensor here is traceless, and its coefficient is a, and then this part is um, full trace, and its coefficient is b, and so b is related to the two-point function of zeta, and a is related to the two-point function of gamma. Uh, the same story happens for three-point functions, and again, I have here the results, so all kinds of three-point functions of scalar and tensor perturbations are expressed in terms of three-point functions of stress tensor. We want to evaluate these kind of three-point functions on the right-hand side. And as one can expect, this may be difficult. So. What are the examples that we want to we want to consider? So basically, the two main examples is uh, okay. So let's take a dual field theory to be just a free theory, and so then when we want to evaluate things like uh, three-point function of stress tensor, we we have to basically so in free theories we just need to calculate like three points one loop integrals in equals three space-time dimensions. But probably more interestingly, we could say, OK, let's start with some CFT, like a free theory, and we can deform it by uh, some scalar operator. So if we start with free theory, we can take a um, classically marginal operator, such as phi to the 6, or some generic nearly marginal operator O of dimension 3 minus lambda. And so in this case, to use the, um, the correspondence, we will have to calculate three-point functions such as this, let's say. So now we can see that, OK, if t mu nu is the stress tensor of a free theory, this will be some horrible multi-loop 
um, multi loop Feynman integral. Um, and if we just, instead of 5 to 6, put some generic operator, then we have to know what is the most general conformal structure of this two point function. And the last remark is that um, in all these cases, what can happen is that these correlation functions have some singularities. If this happens, the singularities must be cured by renormalization. And when the renormalization is required, many of these naive relations, like, like, like these ones, uh, they can fail. And so one needs to be very careful in such cases. Okay, so um, this sounds like a difficult problem. Can we deal with it? And it turns out that yes, and this is exactly what the triple K package offers you. It will deliver, it delivers tools for calculations of all these two point functions. And now I will show you how to do it. So what are triple K integrals? Well, it's very easy. A triple K integral is an integral that contains three Bessel K functions or Bessel functions of the third kind and is given by this integral. Um, it depends on three parameters that will basically have an input interpretation of magnitudes of three momenta that satisfy um, momentum conservation. So these guys appear here and also as arguments of these three Bessel K integrals. And then there is a four parameters a single one called alpha and three parameters called beta. Uh, the parameters beta are orders of Bessel K functions and alpha appears as this power over the integration variable x here. And we know from basic holography that this object is basically a three-point function in ADS for the simplest Witten diagram that we can write because the bulk to boundary propagator in momentum space is expressible in terms of Bessel K. So we already know from this that this object indeed um, represents a three-point function, scalar three-point functions, and then these parameters, alpha and beta, are related to dimensions, space-time dimension and conformal dimension in this fashion. Okay, so it turns out that this is not only true for scalar correlation, three-point functions, which is the same uh, expression written here. It's also true for all kinds of tensorial correlation functions. However, you have to work a little bit harder. So let's say for a three-point function of a stress tensor and two scalar operators, first what you have to do, you have to decompose it into a transverse traceless part, that's transverse and traceless with respect to these indices, and then there is some sort of rest, which you can always recover from water entities, so this is completely expressible in terms of two-point functions, and then you have to deal with this transverse traceless part, it, it turns out that in any case the transverse traceless part is also expressible in terms of triple K integrals. You have to do some sort of decomposition. In this decomposition, you have to deal with the tensor structure, obviously. And then you have some scalar functions of momenta, which we can call form factors. And all these form factors can be expressed in terms of uh, triple K integrals. Uh, a difference between the scalar case and this case is that the indices here may be shifted by integral numbers. And for this reason, instead of this i, which is a triple K integral, we define a reduced triple K integral given by J, where we only indicate these shifts, while we assume that values of alpha and betas are fixed according to the dimensions of operators that are considered here. So all of this um, was worked out in a series of papers, and the first one was this one, uh, implications of conformal invariance in momentum space. and for example, if we go to page 74, we can find all these decompositions for, in this case, um, two-point function of stress tensor and two concept currents. And there's a lot of formulas, but so, for example, here, uh, we see how this two-point function is given in terms of transverse traceless part and a lot of stuff here that accounts for 
all the stuff that's not transverse traceless, but all of this is expressible in terms of some two-point functions. So that's this is all due to water entities. And then here we can see how the transverse traceless part is expressible in terms of form factors. So in this case, we have four form factors, a1, a2, a3. This is also a3 with some parameters, um, with momenta uh, switched, and a4. And eventually, you can solve water entities, and you can arrive at this sort of a solution. So all form, form, form factors are given in terms of triple k integrals. And this is a very powerful and novel approach to the problem because many of these triple k integrals now can be evaluated explicitly. Another application of triple k integrals comes from the fact that many two and three point uh, Feynman integrals can be expressed in terms of triple k integrals and these can be evaluated explicitly. So, uh, in particular, all these kind of integrals, so this is a two-point function-like integral, we have two factors in the denominator, but with arbitrary powers and some numerator, and also the three-point function-like integral, where you have three factors in the denominator with some arbitrary powers here and some numerator, all of these can be expressed in terms of triple k integrals. So here we have example of how it works for just a scalar numerator. And we have triple k integrals on the right. And so now all these integrals can be reduced to triple k integrals. And now the question is whether we can evaluate these triple k integrals explicitly. And indeed, there, is many, there are many cases where we can do it explicitly. And um, one of the two important cases that we'll use here. So one case is this one. So this is a case where all beta parameters are half integral. And this happens for operators of integral dimension in odd dimensional space times. So in particular, in D equals three, if we have operators of integral dimensions, such as stress tensor or conserved currents, uh, all triple K integrals, and by extension, all Feynman diagrams involved will have explicit, ex will produce explicit expressions. Another case, which is more complicated, but it's also solvable and expressible in terms of elementary functions, uh, basically it boils down to uh, correlation functions of operators of integral dimension in even dimensional space times. If you want to know more about it, uh, please go to this paper. This is a paper that explains in very basic ways the package triple K package, and it contains also an introduction with all the references and a short introduction to the story. So let's look at the package. When you open this paper and you scroll down a little bit, you get a link, you click the link, you can download the package. And if you click here, you'll get the package. You unpack whatever is in the package, and you find nine files. These two Mathematica packages are the heart of the package. Basically, triple K contains all the procedures, and the rest are examples and uh, results on various correlation functions. So you can look at these, and these contain much more information that I'm going to tell you now. OK. So I saved this notebook in the same folder as the package. So now we can just use the get command to get the package. And the first thing that we will do here is to calculate two and three point function of the stress tensor. And actually it's trace for the theory of free scalars. So um, here is here is the stress tensor in momentum space for the theory of free massless scalar. This P tensor here is given by this combination. We work in Euclidean signature. And so the two-point function is given by this expression. So we have these two terms. The first part is this prefactor and then the actual momentum integral. Okay, so first we define 
this tensor P here. And to do it, we use delta. Delta it will be recognized as a Euclidean metric. OK, and now we have this prefactor, so prefactor, and the numerator that's given here. You can also use subscripts instead of uh, brackets. That's equivalent. OK, so this will be our numerator. And now, how do we represent this loop integrals? So these kinds of momentum integrals are represented by loop integral in the package. This is very similar and inspired by package X. So what you have to really care about is the order of these parameters. So this delta 1 and delta 2 are the powers in the propagators here. So for the standard propagators, delta will be equal to 1. Uh, and then we have numerator and this uh, the loop momentum. OK, so let's go back. So we want to consider a loop integral in three space-time dimensions, that's D. And then the powers here k square and k minus q square, so delta 1 and delta 2 are 1 and 1. Uh, and then we put the numerator here, so this k is the mm, momentum flowing in the loop, and p is the external momentum. OK, and now we can just use loop evaluate to evaluate this integral. OK, and we got this result, and we can check whether this is correct or not. So first, we contract with our prefactor this. And now we can do various checks. So first of all, this should be our two-point function of stress tensor. So it should be transverse. So if we contract it with um, external momentum, this should give us 0. And indeed, it is 0. Um, and we can also take trace of this expression. And when you take trace, we got this result. And so if we go now to the paper here, um, we see that indeed the two-point function of traces is equal to p cubed, in our case, over 64. So this is exactly what we find. And we can also find a and b coefficients uh, given by these formulas, and in this case we find they are equal and equal to 1 over 256, which is also the correct result. Okay, so this is how we can deal with the two-point function. Now let's do the three-point function. So um, first let's calculate the three-point function of traces of stress tensor, but let's do the same thing as before. So um, let's see. This is the integral that we have to do. So the three-point function is equal to this. So we have these three p tensors here, and then this uh, one loop three-point integral to do. So the same thing. We have the prefactor here, and this numerator here is just written here. So let's execute. OK, and similarly as before, now we have to write down this loop integral. So it's very similar. So the first argument is the space-time dimension, and then these three powers. Uh, and this is very important here. You have to see the order of these guys. So the first parameter, delta 1, is actually the power of k plus p2. Um, this is for symmetry reasons. And then the next one is k minus p1. And then the last one is power of k. Um, so here we have three space-time dimensions. And all powers are 1, these are standard propagators. Then we have the numerator that we wrote here. And we do the loop uh, momentum integral over k. And in the case of three-point integrals, we do not specify external momenta. It's always assumed that the external momenta are p1, p2, and p3, and they, they sum to 0. OK? So we get this integral. And uh, we take our prefactor, and we will, because we will consider here only traces of stress tensor, we, well, we trace it. OK, so now we have to multiply this with this integral and contract all the indices. Well, if we just multiply it and do contract, nothing really happens. And this is because uh, contract doesn't go in the integral. 
And so there is a function called k simplify. And if we execute this k simplify on this expression, then it will indeed go through all these contractions within the integral. OK, and we got this expression. And now we can just do loop evaluate. And this is the final result. And this result hopefully agrees with this result here. And indeed, we have 1 over 128. And then this stuff should be this stuff. OK, and our final example will be a three-point function of a stress tensor and two scalar operators. Um, so what we want to do first, we want to calculate the three-point function in theory of three massless scalars, or this three-point function, basically. Uh, here contracted with uh, helicity tensor. So first we calculate the three-point function and then contract it. Um, so this is how we do it. So we take the same prefactor as we had before, but we only contract now two indices. So mu tree and the new tree remains. This is these are the two indices on the stress tensor that's not contracted. And just to make things slightly faster, I will first just explicitly contract the numerator before substituting to the loop integral. So we just do it here. And now we substitute the loop integral. Here, just to be safe, I put dimension to be 3 minus 2 epsilon. So the final result is final result is finite. The problem is that some intermediate steps may have some divergences. And uh, yeah, this is just for safety. So, OK. And now we do loop evaluate, and the result uh, is obviously long. We can see it, and it will take a moment, but it's worth it. OK, so we got our result, which is a huge mess. Uh, but because we want to contract it with helicity spinners, uh, helicity tensors, um, the only thing that matters is um, coefficients of these two vectors. So we just kill everything else. And OK, we found this expression. And now when we contract this with helicity tensor, uh, we just basically remove these two guys and put this. Um, expression where lambda is um, standard Kalen lambda. So uh, we can get it by using k full expand. So this is what lambda is. OK, and this expression now should match exactly, well, not exactly, up to a constant. This expression up to a constant because well, I didn't care about these constants. Uh, so let's just check it. Um, these a1, 2, and all the other things are the symmetric polynomials written here. Uh, and then this expression is this expression here. And if we divide what we found by what it should be, it is exactly equal to a constant. OK, so the next thing that we may want to do is to consider three-point function of stress tensor and um, two scalar operators of dimension three. So now, if we consider cosmological correlation functions, uh, where the deforming operator, where we have a CFT deformed by a scalar operator of dimension close to three, then there is some work involved. But basically, uh, what one can show is eventually that the two-point function that we are looking for has this sort of a prefactor that's because the operator here is not exactly marginal. And then what stands here, so this piece, this is actual three-point function of the stress tensor and two scalar operators of dimension three. So this is what we will calculate here. Uh, first, we will calculate it uh, using just general CFT considerations, and then we will also calculate it in theory of free massless scalar. 
Okay, so if we include the second package that's um, in the whole package delivered, uh, let's do it. Now we will have access to what we call here primary solutions. So let me explain what it is. So we found be before this the composition of the three point function of system solar to scalar operators, and the transverse traceless part contains this uh, form factor A1. And what primary solutions of the OO is, is exactly the list of all form factors. In this case, there's only one, and how it is expressible in terms of triple k integrals. And here, alpha 1 is a constant. So this tells us that a1 is equal to this integral times alpha 1. So it's exactly what's, what's written here. So let's do it. And because this is the reduced integral, we still have to put dimensions. We can do it by using this function j2i, where this is, again, the space-time dimension 3. And these are the dimensions of the three operators. So stress tensor has dimension 3, two dimensions. And then two scalar operators also of dimension 3. And so we see that the form factor A1 is given by this triple K integral times an arbitrary theory dependent constant. So this is very easy to evaluate. Okay, and we find this expression. And now this expression should match this expression. And this is indeed the case. These are symmetric polynomials in P1, P2, and P3. So when we with symmetric reduction up to a constant, this expression is exactly this expression. And of course, the denominator also matches. So good. So we found the two point function of the stress tensor at two, um, or the, at least we found transverse traceless part of the two point function of the stress tensor and two um, operators of dimension three in three space time dimensions. And now we can check it or basically evaluate this with the value of the scheme dependent. It's of this the value of the theory dependent constant in a specific theory. So in our case, three massless scalars. Uh, so to do it, well, we have to write down the Feynman diagrams. So the Feynman diagram in this case we have two five to the six operators. This have dimension three in d equals three. So and then we have insertion of stress tensor here. So what we have to do, we have to do this for loop integrals first, and this will produce some sort of uh, effective propagator. And then with this effective propagator, we will have a single loop with three points. So to do it effectively in Mathematica, we can use function fold. So if you don't know what fold does, it has three arguments. First argument is the function that we will recursively apply arguments. These will be these arguments. And the starting argument is a. So exactly what you can see here, if I do fold f a three four five, I get this expression. So now if you know a is also f one two, I get something like this. And now think about these numbers as just being k one, k two, k three, k four, k five. So this is the structure here, and you can write it um, like this. So you get these nested integrals uh, over k1, k2, k3, and k4. So if we want to calculate this effective propagator, we can now use fold. The starting point, so this a here, will be just this most inner integral. So this is loop integral, e3 minus 2 epsilon dimensions, the standard propagators, numerator is 1, we integrate over k1, as here, and the, the result depends on k2, which is here. And then we recursively substitute the results to the next loop integral. And here, um, because we only have one propagator here, so this, this one, while zero, that there's no other propagator, the other propagator is whatever we get from the previous integral. OK, and we do it for k equals k1, k2, k3, and k4. And the final k5 will re remain for k. OK, so we get this structure. And we can now evaluate this effective propagator just to see what happens. OK, and uh, I mean, it always happens that it's just some prefactor. And it's also interesting that this prefactor diverges. You see it's gamma minus 1 plus uh, regulator. And we have k to some power. And notice this is a positive power, not negative power. So this is indeed a free propagator, not the usual propagator. OK, and now we substitute. Um, 
this effective propagator into the momentum integral. So our three-point function looks exactly like this. So we have again our familiar tensor P and then this loop integral is given explicitly here. So we have our effective propagator, then the two propagators associated with these two lines and the vertex structure of the stress tensor. So this is exactly what we have here. And now we can evaluate it. As you can see, this expression is actually divergent, but uh, we still didn't apply the tensor of P, so let's first do it. And it's also long. Okay, so let's contract it with our tensor of P. And as you can see, it's still divergent. Now, is it good or is it bad? Because before we found our form factor and it did not have any divergences. Well, actually it's okay, because what that divergence is multiplied by this, as you can see, this is a transverse but not traceless tensor. So the divergent terms are not transverse traceless, and in fact you can relate them via what entity to the two-point function of our um, scalar operators. And so while the well, this is the full two-point function, the two-point function is divergent, and these divergences must be cured. Uh, the transverse traceless part, in fact, is finite, and this is uh, what we get here. So there is a trick to get the transverse traceless part. If we remove momentum P2 and use only P1 and P3, and then look for the coefficient of this um, tensor, then this is proportional to the transverse traceless part or to the form factor A that we had before. And uh, when we take this coefficient, we see that this is finite. So indeed, there is no infinity in the transverse traceless part, although the reminder of the correlation function may be divergent and requires a normalization. And now we can compare it with our previous result, which we stopped here. So this is what we found before. And these two results are indeed identical, and we can find the value of alpha 1. As one comment here, this is not actually alpha 1 for the theory of three scalars, because when we do this kind of integrals, uh, there's, there are some symmetry factors uh, because of permutations and such, which we didn't include. But of course, when you count this properly, uh, you can recover the exact value of this alpha 1 or P coefficient. Uh, by this method. So this wraps up my presentation of triple K Mathematica package. I hope I convince you that these horrible calculations are not that horrible after all. And I showed you how you can apply them to holographic cosmology. Please refer to this paper for more information and download my package from this website. Thank you very much for your attention and have fun.